So this is an Alice Cullen painting requested by QSC12395. I'm going to start off showing you guys how to prep scanned line work. I just did like a pencil and like a crappy pen on regular paper because I'm not really going to use these lines. A lot of people just set the layer to multiply so that they can just color under it. But if you want to color your line work, um, what I like to do, well first we'll clean it up by using the curves. You use the white eyedropper and you select what you want to be white, it lightens it up for you. So that cleans it up. And um, now we're going to go to the channels menu and we're going to uh, click the little dashed load channel as selection button. And what that does is that just selects all the white for you and then once you hit delete or clear it um, and then lock your, your lines layer, then you can color your lines. You can color underneath them on the layer underneath and it's, it's happiness, yay! So that's a great way to do it. So anyway, we're starting with the painting. I just did the flat colors really fast um, because it's not really that important. And now I'm just laying out the shadows and um, the highlights and things like that, just using a brush, you know, set to like a 60% opacity. And just kind of throwing it down so I can get the shape of it. The only lines I left in there were the lines on her face, so I could just have some idea of where that stuff's going to be going. So um, just throwing that in there really quick. Um, going over the hands. This picture was a really bad <laughs> reference that I used. I couldn't really find a whole lot of good pictures of Alice Cullen and and the the cool promo shot that they had it was really small um, wasn't really close up on her face and there was kind of some parts that had to be made up but it it worked the lighting was really weird because it had this undershot of her chin that if you get it just wrong it makes it look like she has a double chin I didn't do the 100% best job on it but I think um, at least she doesn't look like a 50 year old woman so yay but now I'm just using the smudge tool with a spattered brush and about 60% again to smudge everything out and kind of mix it up um, I would also recommend maybe doing uh, sort of painting everything a little a little neater than I do maybe just go in and paint it really nice to begin with so you don't have to do all the smudging I just I've always smudged it's how I work. Maybe my next one I'll try not to do this much to like. I'm not saying that the way I do things is by any means the best, but it is the way that I do it, so it's easiest for me. Um, just working with a hot mess and then fixing it later, I guess. So going down to her chest, I try to keep the left side of her body pretty cool and then the right side a little warmer. You'll notice every now and again in the areas where the shadow meets the light, like right there, I'm upping the saturation on it because that happens um, in real life, the area where the light meets the shadow, it gets the most saturated. So you want to act like you kind of know what you're doing every now and again and throw that in there. Honestly, I have zero background in color theory. I'm just kind of trying to do what I see and what I've learned and it's not a whole lot, but you know, it's what I've got going on, so whatever. Now I'm doing her nose, another part of this image that sucks. It was so hard because um, it just looks weird the way the shadows fall on it and she's kind of got like... A buttony nose thing happening but again just make it work the best you can and if you, it's not in your reference just try to make it up and make it look like it works so now we're doing her eyeball and the Cullens have those shadows under them from being dead so got to keep it kind of kind of dark underneath and putting in the shape of the eye so it actually looks like like it's a ball underneath her skin because that's what you know that's what your eyeball is it's, it's got that shape going so again upping the saturation at the point where the light meets the shadow and working on that eyeball and adding a little pink in the corner for you know the blood vessels and all that good stuff and I just threw in the eyelashes really quick with uh, again it's gonna be zoomed out I'm so lazy but you can just make it kind of blurry because no one's really gonna see it and now we're doing her eyes instead of doing them dark like they were in the picture I, I kind of lightened them up to be that goldy um, we're not so hungry Cullen color uh, so I will add, I'll be using the dodge tool, the color dodge, to um, brighten it up and I'm gonna give it that fiery orange look and just smudging it out again. Now it's time to blend out her eyebrows. I don't really draw, get too into it with the hairs and everything just because, you know, it's zoomed out and I'm lazy. But now we're blurring out the lips, smudging everything together. Okay, now onto the cool part. I am doing a tutorial on how to do fabric because she's got like a paisley little dress on. Um, 
we're gonna go to create clipping mask and that's gonna clip it over the bottom of the dress. We're gonna do the same thing with this um, seersucker fabric at the top because I had the, the top and the bottom on two separate layers. Okay, now we're gonna use the warp tool. I don't know, uh, I think it used to be the liquify tool in older versions of Photoshop, but and I'm not sure when they introduced it, but it's really awesome because you don't wanna just put flat lines on the top of her chest because her chest is not flat. So you use the warp tool and you can just pull it out at the various points and just to give it some shape. I'm not focusing on it too much. I just want to do it enough to make it, you know, look like it's not flat, but it's not that huge a deal to me. But I'm going to do that also on the, the bottom with the paisley print. Same deal with the warp just to kind of move it around a little bit. This one, I, I set it to mode darken so that it doesn't um, multiply the shadows. And now I'm doing the crochet on her, her jacket thing. I didn't want to do too much detail on this because... By the time I got to this point, honestly, I was tired of this picture. But um, so I found this awesome scarf knit, and I did the same thing that I did at the beginning with the channels and the load selection, so that I could just isolate the black of this. And now I'm just laying it over the jacket layer. So we have the jacket layer, the black, the arms underneath, just to show you the layers that I'm working with in the order. So now I um, selected the jacket layer and then deleted all the edges of the crochet, kind of made it red so I can see what I'm doing. Now on the jacket layer, I'm going in and I'm deleting out these circles so that you can see the skin layer underneath. And I'm going to use a, a filter of a Gaussian blur, blur that out, just so that it's kind of highlighting, just showing through a little bit of that, that crochet print. And that way I don't really have to work with it a lot because you're not seeing the whole thing. So now I'm going to go back in um, and paint back in some of the jacket and take a little bit out so it's not so circular. But basically that's how um, you, you know, you get that cool crochet effect. And it was, you know, this doesn't automatically work for anything that you've got. Like, I just kind of lucked into this particular fabric because I really did not want to draw the details on this girl's jacket. Um, but just kind of blend it out. Um, I have to... Make sure, you know, you're not getting too close to the edges so people can't really see the fact that it's not shaping around her arm. And um, then we're just going to go down and add the little bits over the hands and uh, make it look like she's wearing, you know, a, a woven kind of see-through jackety thing. This isn't exactly the way it was in the picture, but again, if I wanted a copy of a picture, i just pull it into Photoshop and throw a filter on it. So, you know, you want to keep it looking a little handmade and obviously like you did something with it so that's Nibbles in the background she's a little upset Nibbles sit good girl so anyway this just kind of took a little longer I didn't speed this process up so you can really see what went into it so everything that I'm doing here is basically just erasing to show the layer of skin underneath the black jacket layer I've left the crochet bits alone since they're black they're only showing up when the layer underneath them is erased yeah, it's not as complicated as it looks, but that's about it. I just pulled in, you know, the Cullen Crest over a textured paper background that I had, and uh, I think the font that I used for her name was Naughty Gals, and there you go. That's Alice Cullen. So thank you so much for the request. I hope this helped you out in some way, and have a great day. Thanks.